My talk today is on retreating yourself. And I've had a couple people look at me and go, huh? And it's a, it's a play on the idea of being on retreat and treating yourself well, right? So you get to retreat yourself, because it's something that we don't just do once. We have to make the commitment to it over and 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 over again. So this was me <laughs> uh, two and a half weeks ago, yeah. right? Nice. Chris and I were in Martinique, and we were visiting her family, and we were retreating ourselves. Right? We really were. We were having a great time. Um, yeah, just like that, Joy. Just like that. <laughs> and before we left, to go on this amazing trip, this is what I look like. <laughs> and that's really me. <laughs> okay? That is really me. How many people in here can relate to this image? <laughs> it is amazing how busy our lives are. It is amazing how full our life is. And I have found that since I have come back, so a lot of you know that I had a, a day job while I was, I was working here. I have my private practice where I see clients, and then I also had another job. And uh, my last day on that job was on Good Friday. How about that for symbolism, huh, right? And Chris and I got on a plane that night and went to Martinique. And then we came back. And I realized when we got back, that I am addicted to busy. <laughs> because I don't have that other job going on right now. I'm addicted to busy. It's really hard to not just try to fill my time. It's really hard when my life had been this to actually quiet everything down and allow myself to truly be present. Really hard. And I have a spiritual practice. I mean, I, I, I am committed to living these teachings. And so a part of me had just been looking forward to the time. I was like, oh, time. And number one, it's amazing how quickly all that time fills up. <laughs> Anybody even relate to that? Like, uh, you know, they have that axiom, if you want to get something done, ask a busy person. Right? So, like, like, all of a sudden I've got this time and I realize all the things I hadn't been taking care of that were on my overwhelm list, all of a sudden I could start to take care of them, but then guess what? I got busy again. I got busy again. And so I have personally been wrestling with what does it mean to really unhook ourselves really unhook ourselves so that we can actually be present. We can actually really be present. So I found this quote, which I loved. I thought, oh, beware the barrenness of a busy life. Beware the barrenness of a busy life. And it kind of runs counter to what we believe here in our American culture. We believe that the busier we are, the more full our life is. And I realized as I sat with this quote, and it resonated, like, it, you know how you hear something and it really lands? It's why I am so relieved that I'm only doing ministry now. Like, that's all I'm doing is my ministry. But the reason why I'm so grateful for that is because even though my life was busy, there was a part of it that was really barren, that was really empty, because I just didn't have the focus or the commitment or the willingness to place on that very, very, very specific piece of being present. And I realized I was hiding in my busyness. I was actually keeping myself safe. If I kept myself busy, then I didn't have to really pay attention to the heart call, to the thing within that was asking me to step out into a new way, in a new dawn, in a new way of being. 
that in my busyness, I came up with a, I had legitimate million and one excuses for not actually doing the thing that in my heart of hearts, I am here to be and to do. So how many of you are hiding in your busyness? How many of you guys going up? I love it, right? There is something that you are here to be and do, and let me tell you, it doesn't look like an eight-armed octopus. There is something that you are here to be and do that is only yours to be and to do. Nobody else's. No one else actually can do it. Only you can do it. How are you using the busyness of your life to avoid transformation and change? To avoid stepping into the next thing that you are called to be? Because transformation and change is scary. When we start uprooting ourselves, it's challenging. So how are you holding that? Are you like the ostrich, like sticking your head in the sand and just doing what you've always been doing, running that automatic pilot? Are you, like I did, staying in a job for a really long time because on some level there was fear of lack? Fear that somehow there wasn't going to be enough? Fear that somehow I actually wasn't fully supported, that the, that the fullness of who I have come here to be in all of my calling, in all of my uniqueness, that somehow that wasn't going to be supported. Everyone else is, but I'm not. Somehow I'm an exception to the rule. So what are you hiding behind your busyness? What are you avoiding? You can't pour from an empty cup. I mean, it seems so clear and it makes so much sense. But when we run ourselves dry, I was literally running on fumes. I mean, literal fumes. <laughs> I mean, it was rough those last three months leading up to the end. I was literally pushing myself. There was nothing there. And that's where the barrenness of my life was showing up. Because I didn't have the energy. I didn't have the enthusiasm. Me! I mean, really think about that. I didn't have that energy and enthusiasm. It takes all of us have that place, that space within us, where we are not allowing ourselves to be resourced and renewed and rejuvenated. Where we are using those day-to-day -day tasks that we actually kind of don't really want to be doing as an excuse to be tired and withdrawn and not be able to get what we actually want to do done. Because it requires courage to step out as only you can. Because no one else can do it. So guess what? It's never really been done before. <clears throat> not the way you're going to do it. Not the way you're going to show up in it. So the word retreat. So in Latin, it means to pull back. And there was an interesting, there was all these definitions that were like withdrawing, and, and I was like, Neugh. it's not about, we're not talking about retreating as withdrawing. Busyness is actually withdrawing. Can you feel that? I'm talking about retreat as in a quiet place where you can rest and relax. A purposeful period of time where you are in prayer and meditation where you're actually opening yourself up so that you can listen to what is yours to do and how you're supposed to show up doing it. If we don't take the time to listen, all we keep doing is doing the same old, same old. Anybody in here feel a little stuck somehow? Where the same patterns are repeating themselves over and over and over again. It's because we don't allow ourselves to actually stop really stop because if we stop and we really listen what might we actually hear mm. and somehow we think that whatever it is that we're going to hear is going to be something we don't actually want we think it's going to be bad we think it's going to be painful mm. why do we assume that 
Why do we assume that the thing that is calling us forward is actually somehow working against us? The only thing working against you is your unwillingness to step into the thing you are called to become. And when you step into it, guess what? You actually are fully supported. You are fully sustained. You are nourished. You are held. That is actually the truth. So we have to let go of the fear. We have to let go of all the ways that we play small. Because when we're playing small, we understand that what we know is how we place our, what we place our consciousness on grows. So if what we're placing our consciousness on is fear and lack and smallness, guess what? We get more of that. And that just feeds our sense that we're never going to be able to have more. We are the ones that have to shift and break free into a new understanding. And it requires that we actually, weirdly enough, don't do more. It's not about doing more. It's about making space to actually be. Be fully present. Present moment awareness. And I, I can hear the excuses already because they were my excuses. But you don't understand. I really am this busy. You don't understand. If I don't do it this way, if I don't have this full of a schedule, if I don't have it done by this, if I, 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 I'm with you. I get it. The present moment awareness is something that you can bring to everything. It is not something that is separate from your life. That's what we know and teach here at Unity. It's our fifth principle, that we actually put these principles into action, that we actually live them. So the invitation is to live into present moment awareness in the midst of whatever it is that you are doing. And yes, if you actually do that, you might actually become a little uncomfortable because you're probably a little unhappy and you're probably a little frustrated and you're probably feeling blocked. But if you don't allow yourself to actually become present to what is actually happening within you, because those are, that's the divine as you saying, hello, time to change. Hello, time for a shift. And if you're not listening to what you are being called into, you just keep repeating it again and again and again. And it'll change subtly and it'll be maybe a little bit more comfortable, you know. But ultimately, you're still going to run right up against that same place again. It took six years for me to run up against that same place again. Of like, oh, I'm supposed to be doing something else. Oh. It's about the beingness and the stillness. We need to be able to be still and listen and activate it. But we have to be activating it from the quiet, not from the chaos and the busyness. Because all that does is spin on itself. All that does is recreate itself over and over and over again. Are, what are you hiding behind your busyness? What is it that is yours to do and to be that you are not fully owning because it probably scares you so much? Because it's going to make you vulnerable and it's going to open you up and it's going to put you in new situations and it's going to invite you into a completely different way of living. Do you actually know how to relax? I really struggled. I, I'll be totally honest. I really struggled fully relaxing. It was hard. Now, it helped that it was like 92 degrees and not humid, and you couldn't really do much physically. Like, I had a lot of geographical, environmental things that were helping me to just stop because I really couldn't move. Right? But it's really hard to relax. We're always trying to figure out some way to multitask, 
to make it all sort of come together. So what, this is my challenge to you. Retreat yourself. Commit at least 20 minutes a day to self-care. 20 minutes? A week? A day. A week? <laughs> 20 minutes. Now let me be real clear for those of you who are so busy. You feel a panic in the room? Oh my god. We were all with me and I said 20 minutes a day and it was like, sure. She wants us to what? <laughs> Studies have shown, this is scientifically backed up, that if you actually commit 20 minutes a day to self-care, you actually become happier, healthier, more joyous, your relationships improve. <coughs> 20 minutes a day. <coughs> now, I cannot, yeah. we're gonna get to that, we're gonna get to examples. I cannot believe that no one in here can clear 20 minutes in your day. Now, it doesn't even have to be all at once. You can do 10 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes at night. You can do five, 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 and five. In the uh, Absolute Abundance class, what we're doing right now is we're, we've set our alarms. An hour, every hour, we have an alarm go off to remind us of our intention for the day, because we're setting intentions for the day. And the alarm goes off, and it just gives us that moment to anchor ourselves back into what we have chosen our life to be. So all of these pieces become part of your self-care. And let me tell you, when that alarm goes off every hour, <laughs> there's moments where I'm like, is that thing going off again? Because <laughs> I'm in the middle of something. And it's like, oh, of course it's going off again. Thank God it's going off again. I get to just take a moment and recenter. This is really about prosperity and abundance. When we're talking about being able to retreat ourselves for 20 minutes a day, we are talking about living a prosperous and an abundant life. We are talking about opening yourself up to the wholeness that you are, opening yourself up to being fully present and to allowing yourself to grow and expand beyond what it is that you think you already know. I know you guys know a lot, but you really don't know anything. Because I don't know. None of us knows anything. So when we step into self-care, it's an opportunity for us to joyfully say, okay, what's new? What's out there for me to experience and to breathe into? So we've got physical well-being. So what can we do to support our physical well-being? Exercise. Exercise. Nap. Yeah. Nap. You know, none of us gets enough sleep. Like, that is just a thing. So if you can take a nap, take a power nap, 10-minute power nap, it rejuvenates your entire system. Napping is awesome. What else? Dance. We're going to dance up at, at the potluck today, right? Dancing is awesome. Throw some music on, dance around your house for, for, for five minutes, and see what it does. This isn't about me telling you what to do. This is about you exploring and creating a self-care process for yourself that will actually nourish you, that will actually make you feel good. Use the, use the dancing, da the dancing thing is a great thing for a transition. You get home from work and you walk in the house, do you want to take all that work busyness into your home? Put on some music, dance it out. Create transitions for yourself so that you're allowing yourself to actually be present right now. What else can we do for our physical well-being? Eat healthy. Eat healthy, right? Absolutely. You got to make good choices. And you know what? Sometimes part of the retreat yourself, so for my past month, I've been drinking my bubbles and eating my cheese and my bread, and my, right? And you know what? I, it, what? That was retreating myself, right? That was me taking care of myself. I'm going on a cleanse next week. <laughs> but that period was me retreating myself. And just allowing myself to give in to the sugar and the fat and the salt and oh, it was so good. <laughs> um, let's see, what do I got up here? I got sleep, eat well, exercise, dance, garden. Get out of your garden. Just do a little something that's physical, 
right? Uh, meditate and pray. Those are physical well-being things. They actually are. When you sit and you're just still, you're actually rejuvenating your body temple. Play. Play. Yeah, Absolutely. Color, like pencil there we go. Art. So this is, she's moving, you're moving us right into the emotional well-being, right? That kind of thing, like play, and coloring, helps our emotional life. What else? Singing. Singing. Singing makes you happy. Where's Danielle? <laughs> <laughs> what else can we do for our emotional well-being? Babysit joy. Babysit joy. Absolutely. Spend time with <laughs> to actually feel what you feel? Yeah. Do you actually allow yourself to have the breakdown so you can have the breakthrough? Yeah, right? But we have to create that space. We have to create that space, because otherwise it's inevitable that something's going to break open. So if we're actually cultivating that space within ourselves, we don't get blindsided by anything. Let's see, what do we got here? Journal. Time with friends. Listen to music. Turn off the news. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? You think I'm kidding? Turn off the news. We watch the news and we watch it over and over and over and literally it's like PTSD. Like you, you just have to stop. Stay, stay up to date, but do not become consumed and obsessive about it. That's not helping your emotional well-being. Do something you love. Share your gift with other people. What is it you love to do? Share it with other people. Self-care does not mean that you're caught in your own little bubble. Self-care means that you are allowing yourself to express fully, authentically, powerfully, right? Mm -hmm. Meditate, pray. Are we seeing a pattern here with meditation and prayer? Mm -hmm. Francine, you want to say something? Uh, loving stuff. I'm sorry? Loving sex. Loving sex, absolutely. We can have intimacy, right? We can, we, can, we can grow that and have that be part of our, that's an important part of our emotional well-being, our physical well-being. Yeah. yeah? And I'm going to say part of my mental well-being, too. <laughs> oh, yes. The sense of smell is so powerful. So using essential oils to help you, right, realign, reconnect. What about our mental well-being? What can we do for our mental well-being? Therapy. Therapy, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Therapy, that's awesome, right? Absolutely, find a place where you can show up and be met in that intellectual realm. What else? Breathe. 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 <laughs> Breathe. Oxygen to the brain. Education. Right? Yeah. Education, reading books. Yes. Sleep. Interacting with animals, Noreen. No, somebody said something over here. Laugh. Laughter, right? Delete That's Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> All right, read a book that will expand your mind or not. Just read something. Take a class, take a nap. Naps, again, are really good for our mental well-being, right? Do a puzzle. I'm a crossword puzzle addict, by the way. My wife is like, are you doing another crossword puzzle? I'm like, yeah, because my brain loves it. Right? My brain loves it. Learn something new. Challenge yourself to step out in something that you don't know and you're uncomfortable with. Go and learn something new. Volunteer your time. Right? Like put yourself out there in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable. Challenge your assumptions. Meet people who make you uncomfortable. Interact with people that don't all just agree with everything you have to say. Mentally allow yourself to be challenged. And then guess what else is on here? Meditate, Meditate and pray. Because all of that is going to help your mental well-being. So out of all these things we've been talking about, can you guys find things in there that will support you 20 minutes a day? Yep. 10 minutes here, 5 minutes here, 5 minutes here. Really, if you can't, literally can't carve out a 20-minute block at one time, I would invite you to re-examine your life, number one. Number two, it doesn't mean that you can't still commit to self-care. It's just you have to be smart about how you work it in. And you have to make it a priority. Because what we place our attention on grows in consciousness. So if we place our attention on our self-care and our well-being, guess what? 
it grows in consciousness. Because you don't want to be this. You don't want to be on empty. You don't want to be running on fumes. It, it is literally destructive to every aspect of your life. You cannot show up fully if you're empty, if you have no energy. You cannot fully be present in your relationships. You cannot be fully present to yourself. You cannot be fully present to your work. All of it is suffering when you are running this low. What the invitation is, is to be in this space, where you are activating multiple avenues for wholeness to reveal itself as your life. Retreat yourself. Take the time. Make it a priority. Out of all the other priorities you have, make this a priority. And let me say this, it's not selfish to practice self-care. It's actually selfish to not practice it. Because you are not showing up in the world in your best, brightest, most potent self. That is selfish. When you practice self-care, you get to show up like joy. And see how that automatic, like what that is. We all get touched and we're changed. That is what we're here to be and do. Touch each other. Change the world. Be have changed ourselves. And all of it starts with us being willing to make the time to retreat ourselves. So let's take this all into our time of meditation. Mm -hmm.